Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we're here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. Team Spirit's carry wrecks their own drafts, Yetero claps back at Valve's decisions, huge leaks about Dota 2 new update, Collapse hates Chinese players and much more, without further ado, let's get straight to it. I think we have to kick off the episode with a shout out to the gaming gladiator's mid laner, Quinn. This dude just hit a huge milestone playing his 1500th map on the pro scene. And here are some fun facts for you. If each game averaged 40 minutes, then in total he spent a whole quarter of a year playing competitive and pro matches. In that time I could have made like 40 videos for the channel or maybe watched some cool TV series or movies non-stop. I mean, people on Reddit should admit and respect Quinn because he's a true professional esports player and that's some cool thing. Imagine their faces if this year he wins the international with GG. Now let's talk about Team Negma. Kuroki and his gang decided to withdraw from the games of the future in Kazan, Russia. They will be replaced by GeekFam, a Filipino team. On one hand, it was a good opportunity to play on a LAN against huge Chinese teams and gain some experience and chemistry and all that. But on the other hand, it was a Russian tournament made in Russia by Russian government and that's why not so many European and North American and overall huge teams decided to participate. So I guess Team Negma also decided not to get into this tricky situation and just dropped from the tournament. And since we're talking about the games of the future, we will have some changes in teams. For instance, PSG Quest will have Ducalis stepping in for Kaori, meanwhile no one from Entity will be replaced by Yowei. Guys, and now I wanted to ask you this, what is esports for you? For us, esports is about emotions. It's about unreal highlights that will be remembered for ages. It's about playing on the edge between win and lose. For us, esports is live. So I want to recommend you this channel because it's your ticket to immersing yourself in this life and not missing the best and most impressive moments. All the best esports disciplines are gathered here, CS, Valorant, League of Legends, Dota and much more. Enjoy the best of the best on this channel, linked in the description. And now guys, let's return to the news. For example, did you know that Nisha is pretty toxic? I mean, he's known for his skills on the battlefield, but what's his like as a teammate? His captain, Insania, sheds some light on this in an interview. According to him, Nisha can be a bit toxic, often pinging on the other player's items and tipping for silly feeds. He's also pretty tilting, but we'll dive deeper into that in our match analysis. And speaking of high tier players being toxic, Yadaro from Team Spirit decided to discuss Valve's decisions. He shared his views on the cancellation of the DPC and Majors. He believes that such a drastic decision could lead to both positive and negative consequences. On the positive side, he highlighted a more flexible tournament schedule. This allows for more focus on events like BB Dacha without the stress of potentially losing out in the DPC League due to inadequate preparation right after a tournament concludes. Additionally, Tier 2 teams will have far more chances to qualify for tournaments. You could even gather your friends and try out, for example, in the Open Qualifiers. But Yadaro also notes some few negatives. Without Majors, for example, he said that Dota just won't be the same for him. They were like mini internationals. And now you just can't even brag to your bodies about winning 5 Majors in Dota. And continuing about Yadaro, Team Spirit's position 5 Miposhka shared why they were almost the only team in the BB Dacha playoffs picking a carry arc warden. It turns out that Yadaro just asked for it and he felt like it. He said, I have more MMR, so you should listen to me, that was the quote. And this attitude might be linked to their poor tournament results. Spirit couldn't properly prepare and rely too much on their carry. Unfortunately, his decisions turned out to be quite poor and their results spoke for themselves. And now guys, let's talk about your favorite personality, Gorg. Gorg's stream recently featured a surprise visit from the well-known but banned Russian streamer Rostislav, also known as Rostik. He's pretty notorious among Reddit users for his active smurfing across numerous accounts, prompting calls for Valve to take actions. Anyways, Gorg and Rostik comfortably chatted on various topics during the stream, but I've highlighted the most interesting ones for you. Regarding the unbanning of his main account, Rostislav claimed that Steam's customer support contacted him but said they couldn't help. 
It looks like he'll have to spend the rest of his life playing Turbo in hopes of any improvement in his conduct score. The streamers also discuss the gaming form of Falcon's Carry and gaming gladiators. Just listen to how they complement the player's form in this segment. About Skitter like a player. I think he's good. I think yeah, he got yeah. a little Look. bit lazy after TI uh, 11 when he won. But then Bro, uh, he's good again, I think. Bro, I, I don't know why all hate him. Really. He's so good, I think. He's so good. He is good. It's the same with Duracho. Everybody hates Duracho, but he's not bad either. Yeah. Or what do you think? Duracho is good? No, I think Duracho is not good. Duracho ruiner. Okay. Roger, yes. okay, that's fair. Right. Did you know that during the golden era of LGD featuring Ame and Nothing to Say, Rostislav himself coached Sinku on Elder Titan and Io? Here is how it went down. What roles are Rossi play? Yeah, what do you play, Rossi? I, I know your Elder Titan is your famous hero, but what uh, roles do you play? Bro, I'm coach uh, LGT on 2021 International, you know, on uh, Wisp and Elder Titan, and I have top 1 just above uh, your speed. Your speed. Really? You coached yeah. LGT 2021? Yeah, 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 bro. <laughs> you, uh, Xing Q, Xing Q say this is man so uh, so best on these heroes. I think I remember that Titan. actually. Yeah, yeah, he said. I mean, it's true. You were you were the Elder Titan IO guy. I remember, I remember. You were spamming those heroes. Uh, I can respect. I honestly don't know, guys, if it's a joke or not, but I don't believe Rostislav, to be honest. Sometimes he says things that just aren't true, so, you know. Speaking of LGD's golden roster, Ame compiled a tier list of carries. Here's how they've ranked. Since the video quality wasn't great, we'll show you the list in a separate image. It seems that under Rostek's influence, Ame himself has become a critic of Duraccio, placing him only in tier B. As for himself, Ame modestly positioned between the tier A and tier S. Yero received the highest praise. Basically, Ame is considering the Team Spirit's carry as his idol and the best player in the world. Just imagine how thrilled Ilya would be to hear such praise from his favorite player. But wait, you can't see it, just look at their shining faces when they're swapping hoodies. I mean, they look like true bros, that's amazing. But Team Spirit's offlaner Collapse doesn't share the same affection for Chinese players. According to him, at TI-10, Yetaro was starstruck by every Chinese player, and whenever Team Spirit was taking them down, Collapse just teased Ilya with, like, saying, so this is your hero, simply proving to him that Chinese carry players were easy targets. Before the match against Extreme Gaming, Yetaro even asked Collapse to go easy on his idol's lane, which might explain why Spirit dropped a game to them. I mean, in Team fights, Yetero just wasn't ready to finish off Ame, claiming that he couldn't bear to take down his idol. Guys, don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about Chinese pro players? Do you admire them like Yetero or would you just dominate them like Collapse? But now, let's dive into the juiciest news of the day. Trust me, the upcoming update details are gonna blow your mind. First off, something on a down low, a new boss in Dota named the Queen of Pain. Honestly, I'm scratching my head here, because it's like what? Queen of Pain is gonna be the boss of the circus, or what? Will it be just the new set, or a whole new game mode? Drop your guesses in the comments below. And remember how Valve, like two years back, let us swap candies for sets and other cool cosmetic stuff? Well, and the game's code just revealed something called the Crownfall Candy Shop. Sounds familiar, right? To me, it just screams of Valve's giveaway spree three years ago. Like, sorry you got zip last new year, so here are some goodies. Also, according to what data miners showed us in the lines of code, there is some new treasures and new arcanas incoming. It's pretty clear which arcanas are coming in the update, not exactly the breaking news, since it was kinda expected and leaked before. But man, I'm eager to see how the arcanas for Vengeful Spirit and Skywrath Mage look. I mean, Vengeful Spirit is now buffed as hell, and if you don't play 
in the pubs yet, just try it out as any position, like carry position, it's super, super strong because if she dies with axe, she still can do damage. As an offlaner, she can be bulky and still compete in fights and initiate and all that. And as a support, it's a cool savior and healer and stunner and whatnot. But yeah, I'm still holding out for a storm spirit arcana. And now about the big reveal, a new hero, the ringmaster. What this hero is about is still up in the air and honestly, I'm not a fan of sitting around and waiting for the announcements. I really, really, really want to see it as soon as possible. There's also some visual novel tied to a new event dropping. But it's still a total mystery what this update will bring. I just hope that Valve won't forget about the cheaters and bugs and fixes and nerves that they have to do except the event. And you, my friends, what do you think and what do you expect from this event and the new heroes and the new arcanas and all that? Drop your wishes and thoughts in the comments below. Maybe we will gather uh, some info that is not yet known and published and we will be the first newsmakers. But now, finally, let's move to the eSports official matches. Today's match analysis segment is packed, so let's quickly hit the highlights. Spirit vs LGD After dropping to the lower bracket, Team Spirit rallied and swept the Chinese squad in two 30-minute maps. Setsu tried to carry his teammates, but the Dragons left no room for a comeback. Extreme vs Liquid Yadaro's idol, Ame and his teammates couldn't replicate their group stage performance. Liquid just dismantled the Chinese team with ease, leaving them to watch the rest of the tournament from the sidelines. BB Team vs Gladiators On the other hand, BB Team delighted fans with their drafts and gameplay. On the first map they decided to go with last pick Medusa, which nearly denied the whole entire enemy draft. The second map required a heroic comeback and a clean-shaved Johnny since, oh, <clears throat> I mean save, pulled through for his team, securing a spot in the upper bracket finals. Liquid vs Gaming Gladiators Interestingly, Quinn and his team managed to get knocked out by Nisha. It seems that Team Liquid is cursed not to lose to Gladiators, but to lose in the finals of various major tournaments. I mean, just look at the GG's drafts, they're just bad, sad. Look, they have Sniper and Marcy as cores in the same draft in an official match, it's definitely out of the ordinary. Maybe it's just testing or they're just having fun. On the second map, Durachu decided to go with his signature alchemist and simply outpaced his opponents. However, in the third game, Liquid decided to target the carry of gaming gladiators directly. They just picked alchemist themselves and logically sent GG to watch the rest of the tournament from their hotel rooms. Azuri vs Team Spirit And yeah, Yadaro will be joining Anton Duraccio on the couch to watch the rest of the tournament. The first map turned out to be incredibly long drawn, but as it turned out, Arc Warden couldn't really make an impact in the fights. While Azuri's mid laner was just tearing through the entire team, Team Spirit's carry struggled to do anything significant. The second map was much smoother for the Chinese team. The Dragons tried to come back with the last pick Morphling, but the rest of the Azuri's draft were just far superior. Superior. Just like that, the two-time international champions were knocked out by Azur Ray, finishing sixth in the tournament. And while it might seem a disappointing result, I don't really think that that is the truth. Because Bibidache is Team Spirit's first huge tournament after TI and their vacations, so they're just getting into the shape. Next, Azur Ray vs Falcons. Falcons also found their groove, sticking to their signature heroes that other teams haven't figured out how to counter yet. On the first map, Azur Ray decided to target the team's weakest link, Skitter, and completely ruined Melrin's game. And that was a secured easy win for themselves on the first map. But the second and third maps followed a similar script, only in the other way. The kings of the Mina region just picked Razor, an unconventional choice in the current meta, and dominated their opponents with it. Now, let's move on to the most exciting matches, the lower bracket finals and the grand finals of the tournament. BB Team vs Team Liquid The final day of BB Dacha started off with BB Team and Team Liquid battling for the slot in the grand finals. In my opinion, Team Liquid's diverse picks set them apart from Falcons, for example, which could potentially disrupt BB's strong drafting side. On the first map, BB's coach, Bulk, demonstrated his readiness for this match, outdrafting his opponents completely. BB Team started strong, pressuring their opponents from the get-go. They secured an early Roshan and began hunting heroes across 
across the map. However, it seems Nightfall isn't much of a Weaver player. Skipping the shard against Brewmaster is a questionable choice. It not only boosts damage, but also significantly increases farm rate. Due to a single critical mistake, BB Team lost a fight and headed over the third Roshan. The game then stretched into the super late phase, where Nightfall and his team managed to fight near the Rosh pit well and finally pushed into the Liquid's high ground. And despite all the BB Team's efforts, Liquid constantly denied their attempts to end the game, with Tiny throwing enemies into their base. Even the perfect black hole from Enigma couldn't turn the game. Nothing doing, but the damage actually pretty high. Nice coil Juco on the back lines they've got. Nisha, cold embraced inside the base. They've got the hex. It's going to be on a nightfall. Do they have the control to go in? They've got themselves a thunderclap. Eblade thrown over from save on a nightfall. Black oh, hole. That's it. On them. the sniper as well as the TA, but they've got the save with the wind waker. Cold embrace. Earth spike's not going to land. Goes to the refresher. Going to be placed right on top of the TA again. Right clicks coming up from nightfall. They've got the finger. They, they get the kill, but he's going to buy back immediately. They get the gun on Sadie as well. Sniper's going to drop There's their divine rapier. rapier. On and only with rapiers on Weaver and Pog could BB Team clinch the game at the 80th minute mark. I honestly thought Liquid wouldn't bounce back after such a tough loss. But on the second map, Liquid just confidently took down Toronto Tokyo and his team in 20 minutes, leveling the series and pushing it to the third game. The final map for BB Team played out much more like the previous one, with all players making mistakes and moments that seemed foolproof. If only Nisha managed to secure the first place in this tournament, he would undoubtedly be the MVP. Just look at how he, alongside Tidehunter, creates a opportunities for his carry, all of this without a BKB and on a hero that's far from the meta's favorite. They've got the he's silence, they've got the back lines, he's still holding Ravage, Sunray's gonna be on top, the focus fire is gonna be on a oh, 30 he's dying. 33 is low, Yule's up into the air, they've got the 8th the right the lands out of the Phoenix, they'll get the kill on a 1, Toronto Tokyo ends up dead, Big Eclipse Ravage. is gonna be dropped, they'll look over the Enchantress, who's gonna sproink over towards Nisha, they get the kill on a save, 2 years down the side of Bet Boom. they finish GPK, and that is the Windrunner gone. Team Liquid confidently won this series and advanced to the tournament's finals to face the Falcons. Falcons vs Team Liquid Falcons were the favorites of the BB Dacha Grand Finals. Despite Team Liquid's notorious history of finishing second, now they had 33 in their ranks, a seasoned and experienced winner. So they might finally claim the top spot. Or not. On the first map, Malrin and his team managed to secure their strong heroes. Facing such a lineup felt almost pointless. This time around, the heroes weren't exactly the meta, because we see Gyrocopter for Skitter, but that didn't stop them from dominating their opponents. Falcons appeared significantly stronger than Liquid in map reading, team fights, and individual skill. However, Skitter ended up helping Liquid by making a critical mistake, similar to his days in Tundra, getting relaxed and losing Aegis along with his life. But Team Liquid couldn't capitalize on this feed. ATF and Snaking just took down 33 without buyback, allowing them to take two lanes. Liquid tried to sneak a Roshan, which they successfully secured, but Melron and his team were waiting for them on their way out. This greed cost Nisha and his team a map. Definitely give some good vision. They actually do get the Aegis though. Nisha picks it up for himself. Question is, does Falcons want to continue? Remember, the creeps are already in the They're base in the behind lane. Them. Yep, Amar, Arena onto two, finds 33 with the spear. We'll get cleansed in the meantime as Mickey and company trying to focus on the back line, but Malreen, such far range now as Mickey's already super low, has to pop the BKB, but Liquid are just dropping like flies. Nisha, the last remaining member, they just die so quick. This will be Aegis. Oh, and they'll be able to surround him now. Not able to get the arrow, but uh, attempting to TP out. Did they use all their stuns? No. Another spear is there. And that's a full team wipe for. The second map was an incredible brawl. Falcons initiated numerous fights. Even if not all were successful, they kept the pressure up. Team Liquid's supports deserve a claim for their flawless performance, excellent warding and timely saves, and also quick responses to the fights. And thanks to all their actions, Radiant managed to farm the necessary items and comfortably counter Falcons' aggression. Just look at how Nisha strangles Malrin and his team with his Void Spirit. Liquid's gameplay at this tournament was 
was pretty impressive, showing a clear determination to win. Perhaps this motivation is driven by the threat of 33 giving 2 hour lectures on Dota strategy after losses. Anyways, on the high ground, Team Liquid made a significant mistake, losing Luna and Void Spirit with no buybacks. So Liquid's course were just sitting there in the tavern watching as Falcons just were taking down their mid tier 3 tower. Malrin made a brilliant decision during this moment, while his teammates were breaking the enemy's base, he was just jumping around the opponents under his vision, preventing them from tipping back to defend their towers. Meanwhile, Skitter was just demolishing the lanes and retreated smoothly. After an excellent fight, Falcons completely regained their advantage in the game. Skitter made no mistakes on this map, delivering massive impact in fights and securing an ultra kill for himself. Who said Gyrocopter isn't in meta right now? Skitter proves otherwise. But Liquid managed to snatch the Aegis and a crucial refresher for Tide. And it wasn't long before they used it. Just look at this beautiful, endless tentacles. That shard, what was Val oh, thinking of saying against the swap out? He might be the sacrifice for Liquid. And he is, but the Ravage double taking a double because he actually picked up the goddamn refresher shard in the pit. Two dead just like that. He is broken though. Do they have enough to continue the push? There are still the two buybacks for Falcons. Is Mickey posturing ready to go? Okay, they still, they have to respect the buyback still. It was a great double ravage. Nisha has a 25 talent. Yep, crit. Okay, there's buyback. Buy buy make it to Gyro TPing. Mickey with the BKB. And the teleport out, but the... Both teams put on a wild show, but Skitter decided to go even further. He bought a rapier. Just imagine what have happened if he lost it and the team lost the game. I mean, ATF and Malrin would have a serious talk with Skitter. And here comes the last fight of this magnificent map. 33 actually limps back to the base. I think Falcons might have to back up here, but the Ancient is fully exposed. Mickey already half HP. Astros have from Nisha. Nisha. Another arena coming back, from Lamar. The buyback out of the voice, but they're focusing on the Ancient now. Skeeter with that rapier, will it be enough? It looks like it will be at 33 and company trying to delay the inevitable. Oh they get the and after this map, Liquid completely tilted, and on the third map they failed to show anything. Everyone knows how much Nisha's performance hinges on his morale. Throughout the tournament he dominated the mid lane, but now he was making basic mistakes and just fitting. It was disappointing to watch Liquid lose without any semblance of a plan. The only notable moment from the match was a rampage for Skitter, which was surprisingly rare in this tournament. BKB and try to fight anyway, the Ravage not really gonna do too much, but the Eclipse doing quite a bit to the DK. Valorant forced to use the Manta and try to run away here, but Skeeter is on the low ground waiting for the rest of Liquid. Marana is dead, a nice tidal wave, but the swap onto Mickey, but he still wants to fight. Not sure why, because he's about to die. The Force Staff will keep him safe for the time being, but the X is there. Triple kill for Skeeter, and he's not done yet. His Boxy will be next. Make it an Ultra as uh -oh. 33 gets X'd into the fireball, Celebratory tidal rampage. wave and rampage, what better way to end After another lost fight for Team Liquid, Nisha just gave in and called GG for his team. After witnessing two relatively equal maps, seeing such a one-sided game was unexpected to be honest. In my opinion, Liquid should have taken at least one map in this matchup, but the Falcons decided not to give away a single one in this grand finals. They ensured to secure the trophy for themselves. And obviously, Congratulations to the team, they had a decent run at BB Dacha. And guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below, because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also, hit that subscribe button to follow the best.at news channel. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.